battle is the Lord's. The battle, the battle is the Lord's. All right, got the mix over there. All right. So the battle is the Lord's. And what I want to focus on today, we've just been coming off of a pretty strong series uh, talking about the, the weapons of warfare and the spiritual armor because there's a, there's a battle that we're in. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to examine another concept of fighting. There's another concept of the battle where the Lord will give you the victory and uh, all you have to do is be obedient to him. Uh, and the, the interesting thing I want you to focus on here is that God is going to find a way to get the glory out of every situation. Amen. Amen. And that, that's what it boils down to. God's going to find a way to get the glory out of every situation. And just at that moment when you think you know what you're doing and you know how to do it, that's when God's going to come in and just mix everything up, <clears throat> change everything around, because the moment that you feel the confidence to do whatever it is that you think you can do, that is the moment that you no longer have faith. Come on. Because you've left the spiritual realm and you've gone to the realm of the flesh. Come on, that's good. Amen. I I've never had to have faith to get on an airplane and fly until this situation. Because the problem was sitting. And, and, and the flight is 10 hours from here to England and 9 hours from England to Nairobi, Kenya. And so I'm like, Lord, this is, this is just too much. And so I was just thanking God that I could just sit down. And, and there was nothing I could do about it <clears throat> except trust in Him and trust the Lord. <clears throat> and so as God is equipping each one of us, um, His main goal is to mature us as Christians. Can you say the word equip? Equip. Again, say the word equip. Equip. Um, as a father of five children, uh, my goal in life is to equip my children. Now, you hope that everything you equip them for, they don't have to use. You really hope that. Amen. Amen. You know, when you, when you take a self-defense class, you're not saying, Ooh, I hope somebody try to rape me today. <laughs> I hope somebody try to break into my car. I just can't wait to use these skills. No. You equip yourself in, in, in case a situation arises, but you're not looking to pick a fight. Right, right. You're not looking for the situation to take place, but you're just getting equipped and you're getting ready. Now, see, I'm talking to those of us who don't understand what equipment is for because when we get equipped, now we want, we want to fight somebody. <laughs> It's like that anxious military person that goes to war and there is no war, there's no chance to shoot someone, and you're upset. Or that police officer that you got all the training, but hopefully you can go 20 years, retire, and never fire your gun. Amen. That's the goal. But then, there are those of us that have a problem and say, well, Lord, no, no, no. I went through this. I'm going to do something with this. If I'm not going to shoot the devil, I'm going to shoot somebody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack somebody because I've been equipped. So being equipped has nothing to do with actually going into battle or warfare because look, when you're equipped, it actually minimizes warfare because people don't mess with you. Right, right. True. Right. Like that. When they know you can do, when the devil knows you can do something about it, he'll actually stop backing up and leave you alone because he knows that every time he attacks you, not only are you going to take him, but you're going to take a couple others from his kingdom and bring them over to your side. about being equipped because there is a warfare, there's a spiritual battle, but when you're equipped, it actually puts you in a position where sometimes it minimizes the battle, but then you get to the place where God says, okay, I'm, I'm going to test you. Tell your neighbor, test you, test you, test you, tell somebody, test you. I'm going to equip you, and then I'm going to tell you not to fight. Isn't that what Christ did on the cross? He didn't get crucified because he wasn't strong enough to get out of it. He, he, he got crucified because he knew it was the Father's will and he allowed them to do what they did to him because he understood there was a purpose for it, but it wasn't because he wasn't equipped to do something about it. And so this is what we're talking about now. So being equipped, but then knowing when to fight and knowing when not to fight, okay? All right, so we need to know when to fight our battles and knowing when to just lean on God, depend on him, and let him take care of it. Uh, first, first point, some battles are nothing more than a distraction. True. I think it was uh, Muhammad Ali that part of his method when he first started was to let the person wear themselves out. You know, thinking they're doing something. 
Because he's like, I got 12 rounds. <laughs> as long as you don't knock me out, you, you, you just getting yourself tired, you work, and you think you're doing something. Right. It's, like, it's like that person gets mad and punches a hole in the wall. You felt like you did something. All you did was create an expense for yourself because you got to fix right. that wall. And so sometimes the battles that lay before us, just because you can fight them, doesn't mean you're supposed to. That's right. That's good. Because if there's a bigger plan, there's a master plan here. By the time you know you get in the argument with your workmate, you get in the argument with this, you get in the argument with that one, the meeting for the day wasn't even with, with your workmates. It was supposed to be with your boss, who was going to now uh, take you to the next level. But you're so worn out by the time you get there, your attitude is all showing, and, and you all sweaty and smelly, and you're mad, and you upset, and you're disgusted. But you're proud of yourself because you beat everybody up along the way. But then now it's time to, to, to focus on the real battle or what God has been preparing you for. You don't have the energy to do it. There's a, there's a song out, I think we sing it sometimes here, talks about strong finish, strong faith. Some of us are strong starters. We have a starter jacket, but there's no finish jacket. Amen. And so we've got to get to that place where we understand that we, we've got to pace ourselves because it's although we want to be like Christ, we're not Christ. You're not. Even Christ got weary in his physical body and had to take a nap sometimes. Praise the Lord. And so some battles are nothing more than a distraction, especially when it's not your battle. So we've got to be very prayerful and very careful about who and what we engage along the way. Okay? Just because you can fight it doesn't mean you're supposed to. It's because you can do something about it. doesn't mean you're supposed to. You've got to seek the Lord because in, in that process of trying to help somebody else, you might drown yourself. In that process of trying to help somebody else, you might wear yourself out to the point uh, that when it's time for you to fight your battle, you have no more energy and no more strength left to fight, and then the devil gets the real victory over you. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to someone the other day, and they were just talking to me about churches in general and how, you know, churches need to do more. You know, and, there are, and of course, you, you've got all kinds of churches. You've got a spectrum of churches. But there's some folk that feel like, man, the church is supposed to pay my rent. You know, the church is supposed to put my kids through school. The church is supposed to do my hair. You know, the church is supposed to do my nails. Like, you know, the church is supposed to do everything for me, you know. Then you have those other churches where they, you know, they, they, every focus is let's buy some new windows. Let's just buy, buy some new carpet. I like the, the smell of fresh carpet. Let's buy some new carpet every Sunday. You know, and then it's, it, gets, it gets out of hand. And so one of the things that, that come to my heart, my mind is this. We have a heart to help the community. We have a heart to help those who are in need. But if you're not positioned in a place of strength to help them, both of y'all going to sing. True. Both of y'all going to run out there and get destroyed and get hurt. And so there, there, there are seasons of gathering grain. Come on now. What was the first dream that Pharaoh had? Seven years of plenty. Seven years of fat. And what did God tell Joseph to do with that? Store it up. Oh, you being greedy, Joseph. No, I'm not. We're being wise. Because in the seven years of lean, that's when, we, that's when we need to give out. That's when benevolence comes in. There's a season where you're supposed to sow. There's a season you're supposed to give out. And some of us, we oversowed. I got hurt because I gave 40000 to that ministry. Well, God only told you to give 5000 that's, that's your fault. And I'm not, being, I'm not being mean, amen? I'm not being crude, but you need to come to a church where we can hear the truth. Because even in doing a good thing, you can overhelp, you can over -sow to the point where you get worn out. And when you're worn out, the devil will just come in. Right, right. Look, the, the devil doesn't care when you fall. He's patient. He's got plenty. He's been around a whole lot longer than you have. He has plenty of time. And you, 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 you feel so victorious. I ain't sinned this week. He's like, no problem. We got next week. <laughs> Amen. He's in no rush. As long as he gets you to come down, to lower your standard, to fall, to sin, to quit, to mess up, he does not care how, he does not care how long it takes. As, long, as far as he's concerned, as long as he can bring destruction to your life, then he wins. And so this pastor here is going to teach you sometimes it's better not to fight. Go, go, go get some sleep. 
Go home and go pray before you open your mouth and say the wrong thing in the wrong way and make the situation worse. Amen? Amen. Don't let folk pressure you. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I'm, I'm living that today. Here I am. I preach and believe in miracles. I can't walk right. Amen. I'm still going to preach. Praise the Lord. He's still been good to me. Amen. I don't think I have some conversation with him. Don't think we talk. Don't think we can talk about this behind closed doors. Like, are you kidding me? I'm on a mission field. This, this is how you do your missionaries. <laughs> you can go reach Africa by yourself next time. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that exactly in those words. I said it to him in the Hebrew because that's the language of the scripture. And that was Christ on the cross. He, he said, Eli, Eli, Alex, I'm back to now. Like, Where are you, man? You, you kind of dissed me right now today. All right? So some battles are nothing more than a distraction. Yes. Facebook. <laughs> you wake up in praise, and by the time you look at three different posts, you're already upset. <laughs> Angry, mad, putting your little thoughts in there and all that. <laughs> some of this stuff is it's not, tell your neighbor, it's not your post. It's <laughs> somebody else's post. Amen. Right. All right. <laughs> now, I'm going to hit y'all with something. You know, now, now. Some of us struggle with battles um, because of the, our, our makeup, the way that God has made us up, or just the way our nature is, our natural makeup. All right, so I'm going to talk about those of y'all who get distracted a lot by battles, especially those of you who are always looking for closure. Mm. I, I know I would get so much for that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just right. It's just right. Like, how does it end? Can you imagine get a book and it's ten chapters and some little kid tore out the last chapter? <laughs> like, I'll be honest, that wouldn't bother me. I would just make it my own last chapter because I'm a creative person. I'd just say, well, let's just pretend what happened. Let's just move on. How many of y'all wouldn't care if the last chapter was missing? Raise your hand. See, there, there are those of us. How many of y'all this would really mess you up? Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> so, so in this case, because usually, let me tell you something, because those who want closure are usually people who are excellent. Everything needs to be excellent, the beginning, the ending, it lines up. And you know what? The devil will work in anything. Yes. Yes. So we need to learn how to deal with stuff in life that has no closure. <laughs> Some of y'all want your tithe back right now. <laughs> you, are false, you are false preacher. You, and let, let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why. Because it's nothing more than a distraction. Be honest. Right. Oh my God, don't let the person die. I didn't get right with my father, my grandfather. What did he mean when he called me a such and such and he's dead now? We, we can't dig him back up. So somehow, amen, there's a part of you where God needs to become the 10th chapter. Come on. Come on. Come on. Where, where God needs to become the closure. Now, those, there, there are those of us in the room like you don't care about closure. Yeah. <laughs> if there are those of us in the room where you don't care about closure at all, and that's not good either. Because closure is important when it's possible. But that's somebody else's church to shame. <laughs> that's First Emmanuel Baptist Incorporated. <laughs> so, so are you seeing what the Holy Spirit is saying today? You have to be battle ready. It doesn't matter what side of the bell curve you're on. I care too little. I care too much. The devil doesn't care either way. He will use all of that. True. If you can't stay in the spirit. True. And distractions are designed to get you out of the spirit. I mean, how do you get in the spirit? One way you get in the spirit is to focus. It's to constantly. I will meditate on your word day and night. You can't meditate on something if you have 400 pieces of information. And 400 voices coming at you at the same time. You can't meditate. You can't concentrate. You can't focus. Amen. Amen. Some of us can't go to the bathroom if it's not quiet enough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like, quiet out there. Concentrate. I have to get, find my happy place so I can. So, so as, as, and thank God, there, there was other examples I didn't use. Praise God. Amen. I was, I was good today. So as we progress through life, understand this. Just because you're equipped doesn't mean you're supposed to fight. Amen. And then number two, every battle is not there for you to fight because some battles are nothing more than distraction. Yeah. 
Amen. I got to keep saying that because like, wait a minute, Pastor. What about the homeless? What did Jesus say about the poor? There will always be the next homeless guy. There will always be someone who can't pay their rent. There will. I mean, I, now, if, if, if the church, it's been proven mathematically, if the church of Jesus Christ, especially the United States, came together, we could solve all these problems as a whole. But no one church can solve every neighborhood, every, every problem. There are about a thousand churches in Charlotte. If we came together, we could clean up every street. Amen. I, we could put every child through college. Amen. No, I'm being very serious Amen. about this. And part of my mission, <clears throat> you need to know as a pastor, is not just what we do in Revive. It's to step out of these walls and Amen. unite pastors yeah. together from yeah. other churches yeah. so we can really get the work done. Because yeah. one church can't do everything. Right. Amen? Right. Let's give God some praise. Let's do that. So sometimes the distraction is a, is a good one. I want to help this pregnant young lady over here. I want to help this person get through college. I want this person doesn't have a home to live in, this whatever. And you find yourself trying to be a blessing, but if it's not spirit-led, you'll be worn out. And when the real battle comes, you'll be too spiritually anemic. True. And then guess what happens? Not only do you fall and fail, but the person you were helping, you can't help them either. And you know what? They'll just find somebody else. Because mm -hmm. God's going to make a way for them. Whether it's you or somewhere else. So you've got to pace yourself and have that understanding if you're going to finish this race. There's nowhere in scripture where you see the, the Christianity race as a sprint. You don't see that. It's always talked about as a long distance, a long race. And if you see long races, people have to pace themselves. Do you know in some marathons they have individuals that they will pay? who are not there to race, they're not there to win, they're just there to set a pace. They literally make a pace for the rest of the team that's running just so they can stay on track, stay focused, and keep their pace so they can finish the race. The, 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 the crown is given to who? He that finishes. He that, how do you finish? By pacing yourself and not fighting every single battle that you can get involved with. Praise the Lord. Amen. No, so I told those of y'all who need closure, how about this? Those of y'all where things have to make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preaching today to one, <laughs> one, one person. It's okay. The rest of y'all are just here for ambiance. This, this is her sermon. <laughs> Has to make sense. Let me tell you something. It doesn't have to make sense. First of all, Y'all sit in the room following a Jewish man who died 2,000 years ago, and his dried up blood is going to make you white as snow. <laughs> it is so funny when I talk to, um, when I talk to um, um, uh, atheists and people who don't believe in creation, I say, you know what, I say, let me tell you something, man. Ev evolution is, is the most stupid thing I've ever heard of. You know, I tell them, I say, and creation is the most stupid thing I've ever heard of either. It, neither one of it makes sense. So neither one of us has been to the other side. I just have insurance. I just have a, I, I, I'm just making sure that I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't have to be real with them. So neither, neither one of them, I wasn't there for either one. I'm not going to fight too hard for something I wasn't there for. But I can tell you this, I once was blind and now I see. I can tell you this, he's working in my life right now. How did he do it? I wasn't there at creation. All I know is I am created. <laughs> So that, that, that's how I look at things in life. That's how I deal with them. And I like to be real. So everything does not have to make sense. We would like it to. And see the issue. See, here's the issue. If it bothers you too much, you will get in your flesh. Let me talk about my condition here real quick. How, what it means by flesh. So um, I've got an issue going on with uh, one of my discs in my back or something uh, because I twisted my muscle. Uh, and my muscle got a little swollen, it pushed my sciatic nerve against the bone. Mm -hmm. And so my sciatic nerve is just going crazy. It's like, it's like, boom, boom. it's like a disco. It's just, my whole leg is like a disco. It's in the 70s, man. It's just, the disco ball is, well, they're just partying all up and down here. The nerves are going wild and doing their own thing. And so, uh, so, so, so what, what I've discovered with this is that if I don't, if I don't deal with it correctly, then all of a sudden swelling takes place. And, and when swelling takes place, nothing moves, nothing works, the pain is everywhere. And when swelling takes place, you can't identify where the pain really is because everything just hurts, right? And, and so getting into your flesh is like swelling take place, taking place. 
when you're in your flesh, uh, it's almost like someone who, who, is, um, who is swimming underwater and you're holding your breath and for some reason you just can't do anymore and you're ready to come up to the surface and you get agitated and then you say, I've got to get to the surface no matter what. I've got to get to the surface. And so being in the spirit is like being calm. You know things are going on around you, but you are fighting so it doesn't affect you. You're not ignoring it. I, I know my child got, you know, got in trouble at school today. I'm not, I'm not happy about that. I'm not going to get in my flesh. Amen. I, I, I know my, my credit card, that's, that's not what it's supposed to say, and they double charge me. I'm not, I'm not saying, hi, kill all my things. No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not ignoring it. I'm not acting foolish about it, but I'm not getting into my flesh. Amen. Because the moment I get into my flesh, understand me, they're swelling. And now you can't sense anything. Now you don't know what God's saying anywhere. And that's how the enemy wants you to get. So you'll react and respond to something even bigger that gets you into a bigger mess. It's like some of us, when we just, when we just lose our mind, we get upset, we get angry, and we lose it. We lose it. In, it's not like you get, ah, oh, yeah, no problem. I have it with your homework. Yeah. No, we, we lose it with everything. And that's what the enemy is counting on. For us to get into our flesh, so when God speaks, we can't hear. So when God says go, we cuss him out like we, we just, because you know when you start cussing, when you start going, the bullets hit everybody. <laughs> and by the time you cuss God out, you're like, I'm sorry, that no, no, you, 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 know, you should have controlled yourself. We're going to deal with that. And so we've got to fight to stay in the spirit. And not allow ourselves to be overcome by the flesh. So things don't always have to make sense. You'd like them to. Try your best. But when they don't, you've got to know when to let go and stop fighting that battle. Because once the enemy realizes this is what your problem is, he's going to focus all of his attacks on that. He's going to focus all of his attacks on it. It's like, it's like a football team. We're trying to move on here. But you've got, you've got your, um, uh, in football, I guess, on the offense, you have these men that stand in front of the quarterback to protect the quarterback. And then the defense, they're, they're trying to break through that wall to get to the quarterback and take him down. And so what happens if you've, if you've got five or six men, it's called the offensive line, amen? If you've got five or six men on the offensive line and you discover every time this one dude on the left right here, the second guy on the left, he can't hold his own. Where are we pushing every play? Where the weak guy is. We're coming through where the weakness is. And for so for some of us, when the enemy finds out whatever gets you in your flesh, he's going to keep pushing at that nerve. Because that's a weak spot. That's a weak area. And if he can get in, he doesn't care how he gets in. He doesn't care if it's a window, a door, or like Santa Claus, ho, 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 down your chimney. He doesn't care how he gets into the house. Once he gets in, he can do the damage he's trying to do, which is to do what? John 10.10. 10. Steal, Steal kill, 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 destroy. The game plan doesn't change, but we let him in by showing him the areas that get us into our flesh. And for some of us, your problem is you have to always have closure. And if you don't, it's... Uh, the problem is that always makes sense. If it doesn't, forget it. That was like good. Good. I'll make sure it never makes sense. We walk by Faith. and not by Faith. So it probably won't always make sense. All right. And the last thing is for some of us, we're looking for the last piece of the puzzle. Don't you hate that? Yes. Who likes doing puzzles like in real life? Come on now. Oh Hundred piece puzzle. How, how many of y'all like doing like a thousand piece yeah. puzzle? No. <laughs> assignment. <laughs> you need a hobby. You need a second job. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, for, for most of us, we like the 10-piece puzzle. Yeah, you know, the, the five. Yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> the five-piece. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken Special. You need a five-piece. <laughs> but let's say we're talking about a hundred-piece puzzle or a thousand-piece puzzle. One of the most uh, 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 d depressing things. <laughs> is to get to the last piece and you can't find the last piece. Come on now. Three checks. Three checks. 
And if you're looking, if you're looking for the 1-800 number, look, look, look. I've been on hold for 10 minutes. I don't care how much it costs. Can you just send me this one? I'll take a picture of it. I can take a picture of the one piece. Can you just, I, no, I saw you have to buy the whole thing. You know, it's like, and so the enemy knows. Now some of us, it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother. I would just call, I'd just draw it in. I would just color what I think it looked like and keep moving on. Amen. But for some of us, and this is a good sermon today, it is, isn't it? This is not always about sex, drugs, alcohol, gang banging, and you know, you know, I kill somebody, pray for me. It's not always that. But the enemy will find a way to come in, even with those of us who are all about excellence. Because whatever will get you in your flesh, that's where he needs you. Because out of your flesh, you'll say and do things that are outside of your character. And sometimes you can't sorry your way out of stuff. Right. All right, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. It says, uh, he said, listen. Oh, we're having all kinds of sermons going on. That's, that sounds like that sounds like Luther, doesn't it? The English guy. That's, that's, I couldn't fall in the crib, I've been looking for him. Where is he? Is he around the corner? Is he around the corner? All right. It's the medication, y'all. It's not me. It's not, no, no, amen. Actually, I'm not, I'm, on, I'm not on medication. I decided to stop doing that right now. Amen. Amen. By the, by the grace of God. So, 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, yes. but God's. Yes. Yolanda Adam has a wonderful song. Yes. Yes. Amen. Y'all can listen to that when you go home. All right. <laughs> But you know it's interesting, you know, because some folk misquote the Bible, you know. Somebody, somebody would say, you know, pray for me, y'all. I, I can't pay my rent. No, the battle is the Lord's. Right. You know, you know, pray for me. My, my husband and I, it's a battle. I don't know. It doesn't say this everywhere in Scripture. There are times when the battle is the Lord's. And there are times where it's, it's still him, but he says, you go fight. You go do it. You know, so kids understand, but, but there are seasons when you have to know. Now, I hope I've opened to your eyes to this, you'll open your eyes to this, that this sounds good sometimes, but there's other times like, no, let me punch you in the face, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, I finally know some scriptures. I actually know what to say to cut them up in the King James <clears throat> and the New Living and the Good News Translation. <laughs> I can kill him softly or how, you know. And then, and then, but then God says, no, it's, the battle is not yours. You see where, yeah. where this is not a fun thing? Because mm -hmm. well, it's a fun thing when you can't fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad the battle is not mine. <laughs> but when it's something you want to do, when you can do, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you would look good. Your name would go in a newspaper. Your cousins are saying, you gonna let them, you gonna let them talk to you like that? <laughs> Even your pastor's saying, you gonna let them talk to you like that? <laughs> and then God says, I want you to peace be still. My Lord. Take a step back. Mm. Love on them instead. Mm. I got some love for you right here. <laughs> so it's not always an easy thing to allow the battle to be the Lord's. Amen. But there are times when the battle is the Lord's. And you have to be in the spirit to know the difference. Right. Right. It's good. So how do I know, Pastor, when the battle is mine, when it's the Lord's? I'll give you a couple of quick pointers. First thing is taking to God in prayer. Remember the time when David, all his stuff was taken? I mean, the obvious thing, like, duh, go get it. He didn't. He prayed. He said, Lord, what's your will? I've learned to follow your leading, follow your will. Take it to God in prayer. And, and don't just take it in, in a lighthearted way. Take it there very seriously. Take it seriously. And when I say seriously, have your prayer points cl uh, clearly listed and specifically laid out. So you don't go to God, Lord, she getting on my nerves. Deal with her. But, but seriously, it's like, Lord, um, I'm tired of coming in second place all the time to my sister. God, it hurts. You know, she's had three husbands, I can't get one. 
Lord, I, I feel like I'm not good. Are, are you following me? Yeah. I mean, you you got to be Dr. Phil with the Lord, man. You can't be Facebook with him. Right. You can't put on a facade. You're not going to get help from him. So a serious prayer is not just our Father and our God. <laughs> a serious prayer is not just you know, getting all real deep, you know. <clears throat> but a serious prayer is you literally make sure you understand what you're praying about. That's right. And be real about it. God, 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 I, I'm having a hard time right now. I'm reading your word, and I don't understand what it says. Your word, your word is boring to me. Please help me with this. Amen. Remember the guy, I mean, Jesus is doing all the miracles, and the guy says, Lord, help my unbelief. That's right. Yeah, I'm embarrassing it is to say that out loud. <laughs> like, I just saw you do all this stuff. You know, I'm still having a hard time. The Bible says that while Christ rose from the dead, rose from the dead, ministered to over 500 people, as he is ascending in the clouds, there are those who are looking saying, I'm not sure if I believe yet. <laughs> so God understands, man. God understands when we struggle with, with unbelief. You're not by yourself, okay? But take that prayer to him, break it down, make it clear. And then after you've done that, here's the last part, leave it there. Once you feel like you've really expressed yourself to God one Good, well, and proper, you have to leave it there. Don't Amen. pick it back up. Don't keep carrying it. Amen. The Bible talks about like a dog going back to its vomit. Vomit means it didn't need to be there. It came up, it's gone, it's out. And you're like, I feel relieved, but I still want it back. No, no, let it go. Okay, let it go, let go, and let God. All right. Philippians 4 6. The New Living Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. See that? Pray about everything. Not just she get on my nerves. No, pray about everything. Because there's more to it than that. Okay? Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. I'm going to leave it up for a moment. Y'all take a minute just read that for yourself without me talking. And let that sink in, okay? Now let it be known, you know, God loves you, He cares about you. Uh, he, he He wants to fight for you. God's desire is to protect His children. <clears throat> to fight for us. In fact, he's always one step ahead of us. When Jesus left the disciples and his followers, why did he leave? He said, I what? I, there, I go to prepare a place for you. I know you'd like me to be here now, but if I stay with you, I won't have set in place what you need for what comes up next. So some of y'all are like, well, Lord, you ain't fighting my battles. Like, no, I'm, I'm fighting battles you haven't even seen yet. Would you, would you stop being lazy and move forward? Because when you move forward, you'll see what I've been fighting for. Don't get stuck. Move forward. But he is fighting. So he desires it. But here's where it gets really interesting, okay? He has no problem fighting for you, but he wants you to be in his will. You can be God's man or God's woman in God's will, or you can be God's man or God's woman outside of God's will. You're still saved, you're still a child of God, but things are going to work out differently if you're not in God's will. God can only fight for you if you're in his will. In other words, if you are participating in what his desire is, he will fight for you there. Outside of that, you're saved, but he's, he might not come in and fight for you. Let's look at this very powerful verse. I love this one. <clears throat> How many of y'all would say that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's my leg. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How many of y'all would say that Moses was probably God's man? Raise your hand. I mean, what? definitely, if you're not sure, come on, I'll show you the scriptures. That was, if there was anybody God was trying to back up, it was Moses, right? And then who came in after Moses? Joshua. How many of y'all would say that Joshua was God's man? Raise your hand. Okay. He, he was. He, he was. He definitely was. But here's what God said to his man. Check it out. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us 
or are you for our enemies? And you know what the man said? Neither. Look at it. Now the man was an angel. Check it out. Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence. Once he realizes one of God's angels, he falls to the ground in reverence and he asks him, what message does the Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Here's the revelation of that. God will fight for you if you're doing the right thing. If you're not, God will fight you. You ever heard of the destruction of Israel? You ever heard of the walls being torn down of Israel? You ever heard of King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon? How were they able to do that? God fought against his own people. I mean, he gave him fair warning. In Deuteronomy, if you do this, I will bless you. Yep. If you do this, I will curse you. Somehow we're like, cut and delete. Uh -huh. Not even cut and paste. Uh -huh. Cut and delete. We just like the first part. God's right. going to bless me all the time. Does it say that? It says if you do your part, he'll bless you. Right. Now, does he say you're not his child anymore? No. no. There's times when my kids are my kids, but they're grounded. Amen. When I grew up, you got whooped. A little grounded. Amen? <laughs> you became ground beef is what you became. <laughs> But, but you never heard a mother or a father. Some of y'all, this is the first time y'all laugh. Y'all need prayer. <laughs> you never heard a mother or father say, you know what? You messed up. You are no longer my child. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear that. But you no longer going to King's Dominion. That's, that's in D.C. You no longer going to Carowinds. <laughs> you no longer going to the beach with the rest of us. You're going to stay at home and, 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 and write some sentences or whatever it is. You're still my child. But see, when the angel of the Lord shows up, you would think that the angel would say, oh, no, Joshua, the Lord sent me. I'm on your side. He said, no, the Lord sent me to fight. I need to find out how you're doing today. <laughs> Where your head at? If you're living for the Lord, I'm here to fight for you. If you're not living right, God still loves you, but I'm here to fight against you. Isn't that awesome? I love this verse. I love this verse, man. I wish that would go deep into your spirit like it has. Been. We're almost done here. All right. So be God's man or God's woman, but also doing God's will. Okay? Some of us stop at, I'm saved. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. So glad I'm no, no, Nothing else to the song. How about I'm living right and doing, you know, just talking <laughs> saved. So be God's man, be God's woman, but be about it. Be, be about God's business. Jesus told his parents, I'm about my father's business. Amen? Amen. I, it's not just enough for me to say he's my father, but I, I want to be employed in his business. I want to be a part of what he's doing. Well, how do I do that? Keep coming to Revive Church. Amen? <laughs> we'll get you connected. We'll help you be about the father's business because that's what we're about is the father's business. Amen. One way you can tell uh, where you are uh, in your decision of whether you should fight or not has to do with the amount of your flesh that is involved. If, if you feel like fighting, but you're in your flesh, you feel like fighting in your flesh, or you're overwhelmed by your flesh, or your thought life is, is encumbered in the flesh, um, uh, then you're, you're not in a position to fight anyway. Now check this out. This may be the battle you're supposed to fight, but if you're in the flesh, you need to postpone it. I don't care how, how much of a professional fighter you are, if you just threw your shoulder out, you can look like a punk and say, you know what, my shoulder's out. Because if you don't, what's going to happen anyway? You're going to lose that battle. Sometimes you're not prayed up and you know it. Sometimes you're angry, you're mad. And, and see, here's the problem. If you fight a spiritual battle in the flesh, you've already given the enemy the victory because you've given him a door to come in. And the other day we said, give no place to the devil. How do you give him place? By being in your flesh. So here's the instructions. Postpone the fight. You know, mama and them, I know we're supposed to talk about this tonight, but I'm just not ready to talk about it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you've always been. You say you're going to do something. I understand, Mom. but Because uh, you, you already know. If you get on that phone tonight, it's not going to be no Jesus up in there. <laughs> Come on. 
God's not going to meet you halfway and just transfer you into the Spirit. You need to be in the Spirit before you go ahead, so it's okay to even postpone a fight that you're supposed to have. That's okay. That's all right. Because in the end, it's all about victory. Okay? Romans chapter 8, verse 6, and we're going to close out here with this verse. Hope you enjoy church today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It says, the mind governed by the flesh is what? Death. But the mind governed by the spirit is what? Life and peace. And here's what gets crazy. It doesn't say the mind governed by the flesh <clears throat> will become death. It's a prophecy. If you're in your flesh, it's not going to work. But it looks like it can. It's not. I can do this. It's not going to work. Because God already said it. So the, the key is to get yourself out of the flesh. Through prayer, intercession, call somebody, call the right somebody. Amen. You call the wrong somebody, they'll get you further into the flesh, and they'll come with you. They'll come with you to the flesh. <laughs> Take the earrings off and stuff. They'll come with you. Amen? Get yourself into the spirit, and then you'll even know whether it's your fight or not. And if you do, if you're in the spirit, what happens? You will have life and you will have peace. If you are in the flesh, you have no business attempting to fight any battle. Anyway, by your head, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word today. God, I thank you for this gracious audience that even allowed me to, to sit and to share. Lord God, thank you. They didn't judge me, Lord God. They didn't look down on me. Uh, but Lord, they understood my situation. And uh, Lord God, today you understand their situation. Whatever has them in a position where they are struggling, they're weak about something. God, I know. I know today you gave all of us another piece of the puzzle. Amen. You did. You literally did. To give us understanding so that we can be victorious in the battles that we have to fight. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here this morning and, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, maybe you're just not sure about it. Maybe like me, you grew up in church your whole life, but now you're at a point where you're like, yeah, I know him, I love him, but I've never really given my life to him fully. We want to take care of that today. We want to make sure that you're not on the outside of the house looking in, but you're on the inside, that you're fully connected to him. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Doss, that's me. I want to make sure my life is right with God. I want to make sure that I am saved. I want to make sure my sins are washed away and that my name is written in God's book in heaven. Then just raise your hand where you are right now and I'll pray with you. Anybody here, put that hand up. Don't be scared, slow, shy. This is your day. This is your moment for transformation. But it begins with a decision, responding to his voice. If that's you, just put your hand up. Thank you. I'll, I'll pray with you right where you're seated. You don't have to walk to the front. And this is not joining the church. This is just connecting with God. Anybody here, you're not saved or not sure, and you want us to pray with you, just put your hand up where you are. Hallelujah. Believing and hoping everybody here has a relationship with him. I don't want to miss anyone. You know, God, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you for just giving us insight, oh God, and just giving us instructions so we can keep fighting. I, I sense in my spirit that somebody here who felt like giving up, you got hope from this message. Because something made sense to you. Something opened a doorway where you said, okay, I get it now. I understand what's going on. The enemy's trying to trick me into quitting. But I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep fighting. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody, let's clap for him. Amen. Amen.